Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Capricorn. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Capricorn, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one. So you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got protecting treasure on the split and coming to life at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so how I'm seeing this is this is kind of the um, transformation that is happening for you right now. By the end of this reading, it's like something is happening in your life that is triggering you from moving from this protective stance into this completely free expression coming to life energy. I feel like you might not realize at this point that you are in this protective stance. It's not necessarily, uh, literally, it's, okay, what am I trying to say? It's protective might not be the right word. It could be something more like, reserved or holding back, maybe protecting the self, right? It's like there, there's definitely a, a, a more shielded stance at the beginning here. It's like you're, you're protecting yourself or you're protecting some aspect of your dream or something. By the end of this journey here, it's like it, it's completely out in the open, expressed, seen, witnessed, um, and the value of it is understood by others. Okay. So, but I feel like there's, you're facing a bit of a challenge that is creating that shift within you. And that's what's here on the table. So it's like, you're in a bit of a high pressure situation. I want to say that's going to, in a sense, kind of force you into making this shift. It maybe it has something to do with time. Like you have to quickly change plans or quickly um, change your approach in order to get the results that you want. Because I feel like you're not getting the results that you want. But you will, right? Okay. Postponement, see? Postponement. Overall energy from the Zen, the Zen tarot is postponement today so it's it's just talking about that that it's it's delayed slightly by the fact that your first go at that your first attempt at this at pulling this off whatever it is feels really important and significant for you is not quite it it's not quite it but with this postponement card it's, um, it's, it's like an exclamation point on the fact that it's not out of your reach just because the first attempt might not work out as anticipated or might not be as fruitful as you had hoped doesn't mean you're not going to achieve it fully at some point, right? Okay, so we're beginning here with the stars in the sky, limitless possibility, and this two of earth. There's something about the posture, the positioning of this two of earth that makes me feel like this is your energy here, Capricorn. It feels like you're attempting to either emulate or um, like emulate an ideal or it's like you have a vision in your mind that you're trying to get out on paper or on the canvas or express somehow. And there's this energy here with the watchers. The whole thing is making me feel like this is like a, a um, an audition or a job interview or some sort of like you are in front of an observer who their whole point of being there is the fact that they are watching you attempt to pull this off. So there's some sort of a judgment here, right? It's like they're, you're trying to impress. Um, you want to convince them. Maybe you want to, maybe you're trying to uh, propose something to them. You see what I'm saying? It's like whatever it is that you do over here, this watcher energy seems to have some sort of a say. It could be that you're uh, writing an exam, something like that, right? You're being watched and or judged or assessed in some regard. And I feel like this could be the progression that's actually happening. It's like this, this stars in the sky is like how you're, you're 
the, the energy that you're attempting to tap into and kind of bring into this manifestation in some regard, right? It's like, this is the ideal. This is what you're attempting to reach for. You know, see what I'm saying? It's like, you're, you're attempting to hold the same position or have the same expression as this ideal that is, you know, in your mind or, you know, in your, in your visual field, like maybe it's a, you see what I'm saying? It's like a vision that you have that you're trying to either, maybe you're just trying to communicate some ideas to somebody, right? And it's like very quickly in the process, you realize that it's not happening because this coming apart card is coming next. And it gave me this vibe, maybe because the, maybe you became like super self-conscious and hyper aware of this watcher energy. And it's almost like it pulled you out of your flow, something like that. Because I feel like you actually maybe started out really strong. Maybe this is the beginning of your performance, of your pitch of the conversation and it's almost like it's losing steam. It's losing steam and I wanna say that it's because, it's almost like you're you're less convinced of it. It's like you go in there completely self-assured, confident, and you start to lose steam here, right? It's almost like the position is beginning to get a bit slack, right? The confidence is starting to wane here and it's because of this watcher energy. It's like you became suddenly too hyper aware of the crowd. If you're in front of an audience or too hyper aware of the ones who are judging your performance in whatever regard that is. So that's where the coming apart energy is. It's kind of like uh, you just completely get a blank mind, totally flub up the situation. It's reminding me of a time when I was in university. I have always had a credible anxiety about public speaking or being like in front of a group at all. The only reason why I can do this is because it's a camera and you're not here in the room with me. If I was standing in front of 5,000 people, I don't, I, I don't think I could do this. So, um, there's something there about that. So it's reminding me of being in this class in university and it wasn't even a big group. It was like 10 or 15 people. Um, and I was giving this presentation and the professor actually interrupted my presentation and just started like ripping me apart, criticizing what I was saying, said that I wasn't prepared. I hadn't done the work, which was completely untrue. He was actually targeting me for other reasons. Maybe that has, some, I don't think that has anything to do with what's going on here for you actually. Um, but it's just, it's talking to me about that it's like that their presence, the awareness of their of the watcher's presence is kind of what is the stumbling block for you. It's where you start losing your momentum or your confidence. Whether or not they're giving any indication of of what they're what they're feeling or or how you know what their judgment is ultimately gonna be, it's like that's that's the tripping point for you. That's where it all starts to to crumble. And then with the seven, or at least that's your that's what you believe. It could also be one of those, like you fear that that's the case, that it's all falling apart and that you're completely blowing it. But sometimes that's not always the case, right? You think that you think it's not going well, but it actually is. So, okay. The seven of earth coming next, followed by the dust devil. It's almost like mid stream, mid performance, mid interview, you kind of trip over Maybe it has something to do with whoever this watcher is. Maybe they're like a big personality. Maybe they're actually well known, right? Maybe there's a bit of a, a starstruck aspect of it here where um, it's like, that's the stumbling point. Something about them, something about just, maybe it's the fact that you become hyper aware of their eyes on you or all of that, right? It's like the pressure suddenly gets too much. And then here it's talking about that in midstream, you start to assume that all of your hard work and preparation is just like up in dust is what this is talking about. The seven of earth is talking about all of the work that you've put into this. It's coming through as like a really um, traditional seven of pentacles type of energy that you've, that you've put an incredible amount of yourself into this preparate, maybe the preparation has been extraordinary. You know, it's almost like writing your, your, presenting your doctorate, something like that, right? Presenting your doctorate and you're in front of this like panel of professionals that it's like high pressure. It's like the pressure gets too much for you and you just start kind of losing it, losing your like train of thought. And it's just, it's like all of your energy just trails off. And there's this 
feeling on your part, whether or not that's true, that's the thing. Whether or not that's true, you fear that you've completely screwed up and that all of your work, all the preparation, all the time you put in is just completely pointless, basically, or, you know, basically, you see what I'm saying. Okay, so with the Golden Palace here next, it's talking about that, um, that you have this sinking feeling that you're never going to reach that goal. You're never going to, to reach the Golden Palace, whatever that means for you. This is like your dream whatever, dream job, dream house, dream situation, dream opportunity, ability to travel, ability to... Um, be invited in perhaps this is somehow associated with the watchers it's like be included in the club be uh, permitted uh, entry into the golden palace it's some sort of high ideal that you have there's a lot of high idealism reaching for the stars type of energy in your reading today capricorn um which is interesting because i'm always talking about it. maybe it's always in the extended so maybe i haven't said it here on the youtube portion about capricorn but there's been all these messages coming through for me about capricorn being actually so kind of other dimensional or from like the farthest star being races in the galaxy that it's like you're so I don't even know what to, you see what I'm saying. It's like, you're so from far out there. You're so far out. You're so from far away that just to be here in this realm, in this dimension, in this reality, you have to kind of like overdo the earthiness. It's almost like your earth persona is exceptionally earthy kind of as an anchor to hold you from like flying off the planet because you're so other than than this other than earth does that make sense so i don't know if i've ever said it on youtube i feel like that comes up in the extended a lot so it's interesting that you've got all these kind of high ideals here feeling like you're this like uber earthy energy am i ever gonna am i ever going to reach my dreams am i ever gonna arrive in the golden palace and it's like from my perspective, Capricorn, it's you're so far beyond all of that, that yes, you will absolutely reach the Golden Palace kind of as a stop point on your way to like much bigger, broader, farther out things, right? Okay, so here you are kind of feeling like the Golden Palace has, has become out of reach, but then the Messenger of Earth appears next. So the Messenger of Earth could be could be um, like like your another aspect of your own consciousness with the with the map shifter too. It's like a message coming in. Could be somebody in your life, somebody really like literally your sister, your mother, your best friend. Somebody stepping forward. Somebody who's been maybe kind of off to the side, waiting for you to finish this this interview, this rehearsal, not rehearsal, audition, whatever it is. Finish with your pitch. They're waiting outside for you come back out you're devastated you're certain that you're you're never going to reach your dreams and they're there absolutely encouraging you in fact with this four of earth as well four of earth she's over here i think the four of earth is for me it's my aunt betty right she's the one that you want to be around when you're feeling devastated or you're having a freak out she's the support system right like she's the absolute rock solid one that knows exactly what to do or say or you know to help you just calm right down so the, her message whoever she is whether it's another aspect of you it's almost like this one's another aspect of you this one is some sort of higher aspect of you like higher self and this one's like a friend or a relative maybe it's a whole group maybe you have a whole kind of um cheerleading squad on the sidelines too maybe there there's a whole group of them right but there's this definite message coming from them or from this one, whoever they are, especially with them with the map shifter card. It's this magical map shifter. It's like she's here to say, there's another way. There's another way, Capricorn, don't give up. It's like this wasn't your only shot or this wasn't your only chance or this isn't the only way. And the four of earth is saying, try this. It's like she's got the moth. She's handing you, the, don't forget the moth. 
you can do, you can, you can have another go at this. You can approach this from a different way or do this in a, in a, maybe even just a slightly different way. If you just add this one specific detail with the moth and, and do it again, right? And it's like this map shifter is giving you a sense of another approach or even just maybe telling you, this could be somebody popping up. Maybe they're actually even part of the watchers group or part of that side of the equation coming out and saying, you know what, Capricorn, I see what happened there, that there was a trip that you had a hard time recovering from. We're gonna change up our usual protocol or our usual routine and we're gonna let you do it again, right? Because there's this idea of with the magic stream, the stream talks about, and it's interesting that all this magical, this particular deck has a lot of magic this, magic that. But the magical sh uh, map shifter and the magical stream, it's like she's saying, like I said, that, the, that we're going to change the rules or we're going to change the plan in order for you to be able to go back and try it again. Because the magic stream talks to me about going back to the source of the stream, kind of following the stream back to the beginning kind of in, and beginning again. The fact that there, all this magic is popping out is... is saying something like that this is uh, somewhat unexpected. It's like this magical moment happening right when you're about to give up or you're certain that it's over. It's like this one appears and says, you know what, Capricorn, we're gonna give you another chance. It's this very kind of synchronistic, divine inter intervention type of energy. That's why it's coming in with all this magic, I believe. Okay, so she's saying, try again have another approach. There's also almost this, like you can sneak around the back. You're, there's a back door. There's a back door to this golden palace that is that nobody knows about because I'm suddenly seeing this, this map ship. And it's interesting because the messenger of earth is also a guide on the trail, right? It's like, she's going to show you a different way around this challenge or a different way through this maze or obstacle course because seeing her like leading you behind this structure or whatever this is, this strange stream is that's that's bringing you in from a different direction or another approach it's like she's sneaking you in backstage she's sneaking you in the back door somehow so that's interesting okay so we've got the um the eye of the needle, intentionality. It's almost like she's she's giving you a tool. I almost, I kind of want to blend these together. It's like this magical, synchronistic guide, support, family member, friend coming in and, and giving you the moth and showing... It's almost like she's giving you a tool and showing you another way to approach it. Because the eye of the needle, maybe it's just a different way of looking at it. Something to do with intentionality, of course, right? It says intentionality there. This approach is rare, is what's coming through. This way of coming at it is rare. And if you do it this way, it's going to, it's going to catch everybody's eye. You're going to kind of have almost like this, a perception of like a golden aura that every, it, it will, it will be kind of show stopping energy. And I feel like it's almost coming from her somehow. How do I explain this? It's like, she at the time that you are spending with her even if it's just a brief exchange like she comes out and says Capricorn try it again go back erase this from your mind and just start over start again or it's her kind of walking you around to another entrance to the building however it is it's like there's this brief encounter with this one and it's changing the entire dynamic for you So it's almost like something about her or maybe something that she knows is being passed to you and it might not be 
obvious or informational. It could just be kind of a, like an energetic thing. Like being in her presence is shoring up your confidence or reminding you that you got this, that you know this, right? It's like she's the ultimate supporter, cheerleader type of character because she's not just showing up in exactly the right moment and like saying exactly the right thing. That's what I mean. It's like very magical, synchronistic type of stuff. Not only does she is she kind of appearing in the perfect timing, but the effect that she's having on the scenario is that it's like that energy carries with you through the situation. And it could actually be something like, it could just be reminding you of something. It's almost like she's coming in and saying, you forgot your moth. You didn't bring your moth in with you. It's like a, it's like a talisman, right? It's funny, the talisman card keeps coming up. I never read it as a talisman, but this is like that. It's like the talisman. She's giving you your talisman. She's giving you something that you're carrying with you into this experience. And it could just be the impact that she's having on you, like I said, energetically, but it could be actually some sort of like object imbued with the moth energy, which is like your, your, your consciousness, your beingness of some kind or somebody's that has a really big impact on you, right? It's like, if you have this with you, you can't fail because it's like, it's like a, a, a lucky talisman, something like that. It's not lucky though. It just, it helps you. Maybe it's like a crystal. It's just like, it helps you. I mean, that's what this could be talking about. It's almost like this thing that she hands you or this energy that she embraces you with. It's like, it just brings absolute alignment to your focus, to your consciousness. And it can't be disrupted because that seems to be the big thing here. That's where the fumble happened was you got too hyper aware, self-conscious and kind of tripped up and then, and then couldn't re recover from your trip. And the interesting thing is it might've all been only in your own perception. At least the, the enormity of it, right? Okay. So she's giving you this talisman, this crystal, this object, or this, um, energetic, it's like she's putting you in an energetic, in energetic alignment and then sending you back in. And it's, it's guaranteed kind of at that point with the queen of air at the end of the reading here, that's absolute clarity, but it's interesting though, because the owl on the shoulder, it's almost like that's what that is. It's like, they're, they're giving you something that you forgot to take with you. That kind of makes all the difference, like some sort of a sidekick. I want to say that it's not necessary. Maybe it, maybe it's something that the others can perceive too, but it could be something that you got kind of tucked in your pocket that just gives you that energy. Like I said, you don't even have to be aware of it. It could be like a crystal. It just has this, this, so I'm almost wondering, is this person's name crystal? Because it's like crystal is with you. Crystal is with you in your pocket, on your shoulder. And it could be the individual crystal and her energy, or it's the, it's some sort of an object like a crystal that is holding your consciousness completely in focus. Right. And the funny thing is Capricorn, I was saying there, the whole thing is like, go back and to the beginning or start again. And don't forget this piece right before I started your, <clears throat> your reading. Was I was when I was shuffling the cards and getting ready to um, pull your cards. I have this whole process that I go through, and in that process, I kept coming up with the wrong number of cards. It's like I count the cards like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It's like this weird. Is maybe it just gets me in the, like a trance state because I do this repetitive one, two, three, four, five, and I'm counting in my head one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and I got to the end and it was just one, two, three, four, and there was. It's like there was no, the, the card wasn't there. And it happened a couple times. Like, and I almost would like, maybe I'm, maybe something, maybe I'm doing something wrong and I'm shuffling, like two cards are stuck together or something like that. Anyway, so I came in here because I pull cards in another room. I came in here and laid your cards on the table and was getting the camera all set up. 
And I looked down and there was a card on the floor and I was like, I knew it. I knew that somewhere I had dropped one of the cards and I was actually trying to almost convince myself that that wasn't the case somehow. I don't know if this is pertinent to your situation, but it's like something is off. I know that it's off. I can see very clearly that something is missing, but I'm almost like overwriting it. Like, no, they're like, no, some, I don't know why it's not even a big deal. But then finally I saw the card on the floor and I was like, see, I knew that I was missing a card and it's important that that card be in the mix. Right? Anyway, so I picked the card up and I put it on the table and this is the card, the six of air, the six of air wasn't in your reading. It was on the floor as I was getting the camera ready, but here it is in your reading now. And it's, it's the multi-dimensional card. It's the ability to be multi-dimensional. Maybe it's everything I was saying here about you being this like uber ulti, ul, other dimensional being almost maybe forgetting that and being too earthy, too grounded, too in this perspective maybe that's what this is talking about it's almost like you're not you're not quite letting it express itself this multi-dimensional aspect of you but maybe this character here is helping you to remember that and bring that forth into this situation because it's like it's going to make all the difference do you see what i'm saying and it's like that's what's that's how you're coming in with this extra emphasis this extra energy Okay, so I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested, if you're interested in that, the link is in the description box. And if not, I will see you next time, Capricorn. Thanks. Bye.